Welcome to the NTN Nightly. I'm Misha Charles. This edition stops stories. St. Lucia's Prime Minister and Chairman of CARICOM, Honorable Alan Chastney, to lead the region's fight against blacklisting. The Ministry of Education and Care collaborate on providing additional opportunities to students. The ECCB offers technical assistance to improve competitiveness in the OECS. All that plus the latest in youth development, sports, and the NTN Nouvelle Arqueol. St. Lucia's Prime Minister and Chairman of CARICOM, Honorable Alan Chastney, will be leading the Caribbean community's response to the fiscal demands placed on member states by the international community. Of primary concern is the blacklisting of Caribbean countries deemed to have harmful tax regimes as recently determined by the European Union. This poses significant threats to CARICOM countries which depend heavily on their financial services sector. Belize and Trinidad and Tobago remain blacklisted despite Belize's commitment to take corrective action by December 2019 and the fact that the government of Trinidad and Tobago lacks the parliamentary majority under the country's constitution to undertake the required legislative reforms. Antigua and Barbuda, Barbados, Dominica, St. Kitts and Nevis, St. Lucia, the Bahamas and associate members Bermuda, the British Virgin Islands and Cayman Islands are on a grey list, a monitoring watch list. CARICOM Secretary General, His Excellency Ambassador Erwin LaRock, maintained that member states have a sovereign right to determine their fiscal policy. The arbitrary impositions of rules by countries and groups of countries other than the OECD with respect to, with respect to tax governance and anti-money laundering without meaningful consultation with the affected states is unacceptable. This is made even more insidious when similar action against larger economies has had to be withdrawn. Such behavior undermines global rulemaking and the multilateral system, which we as small states depend on to ensure we have a voice. It is in the context of such a system that we welcome the election of St. Vincent and the Grenadines to the United Nations Security Council. The Caribbean community has been reaching out to the EU members and to friendly governments to support and intercede on its behalf to halt the negative impacts of blacklisting, which include reputational damage and an assault on the economies of member states, which are focused on resilience building. On the 18th of February 2019, Romania's Minister of Public Finance invited CARICOM Ministers of Finance to Bucharest for dialogue on the issue. The community fielded a mission to Brussels the following day. St. Lucia continues to recognize growth in tourism arrivals in 2019. For the five-month period, January to May, the island recorded 185,568 stay-over arrivals, a 6.1% more than the same period last year, which makes this the largest number of stay-over arrivals ever recorded in the island's history. The tourism climb is also taking place against increasing airlift to St. Lucia. More from Anissi Antoine. The tourism industry in St. Lucia continues to experience a steady increase in visitor arrivals in 2019. According to the Minister for Tourism, Information and Broadcasting, Culture and Creative Industries, Honorable Dominic Fede, the increase of 1,246 airline seats has been instrumental to the growth in arrival figures. The minister informed that new airlift will also be added in December this year. So we are getting ready to... Uh, accept the American Airlines expansion into the Chicago market, which would have given us uh, increased capacity in that area significantly in addition to the United Airlines flight. So that is all good news and we anticipate that our forward bookings are going to be very strong. The minister highlighted the ongoing efforts being taken to maximize economic penetration and to ensure that St. Lucia remains competitive. You would have seen uh, the renovation of the market preparatory stage, which has already commenced. Um, you would have seen the relocation of the vendors. Uh, we would have trained about 200 vendors to be part of this new uh, initiative that we're doing to ensure that we can um, advance uh, greater economic penetration in the sector. Uh, we are opening up new beaches all over the island uh, to make sure that we better manage the capacity of cruise ship passengers. 
Minister Fede informed that the government is better in conditions in the city of Castries due to the steady increase of cruise ship visitors. There's still a long way to go in terms of how we manage the, the flows of, of people from one part to another. Um, we are also in the process of pedestrianizing the William Peter Boulevard and as well working on some logistics in the city of Castries uh, to ensure that um, we better manage the traffic flows uh, when they are very heavy cruise ship days so that we can uh, have a better in intermingling of tourism and uh, local residential coexistence in the city center. The year-to-date tourism arrival figures suggests that there is a steady increase of approximately 6%. From the Government Information Service, I am Anisia Antoine reporting. The Ministry of Education, Innovation, Gender Relations and Sustainable Development is expanding its relationship with the Center for Adolescent Renewal and Education, CARE. As we hear from Janelle Norville, the center has agreed to accept students who perform below average at the common entrance examinations with the objective of providing them a second chance. On the heels of the announcement of the common entrance examination results, the public was urged to refrain from becoming exam focused. Minister for Education, Innovation, Gender Relations and Sustainable Development, Honorable Dr. Gil Rigabert, indicated that while results are significant, there are even more pressing matters requiring attention. Dr. Rigabert highlighted a significant development to be fully implemented in September 2019. That is an opportunity for remedial intervention for those students who have not performed at the expected level. I want to thank CARE, headed by Dr. Mason, for that collaboration, where the CARE Institute will accept some of our students who have capitalized on the opportunity that we have created for that kind of intervention, maximizing on the well-established approaches and successes at CARE. I want to encourage parents to embrace that opportunity I know sometimes we like to bracket students. We are quick to indicate what they can or cannot do. The care success story is that regardless of where you are upon entry, that care can make a success story out of you. Permanent Secretary in the Ministry of Education, Innovation, Gender Relations and Sustainable Development, Michelle Charles, recently announced that the Center for Adolescent Renewal and Education, CARE, agreed to accept 50 of the students who obtained between 9 and 30 percent in the 2019 Common Entrance Examinations and allow them to follow the Junior Life Program at the CARE Institute. The Minister for Education also urged parents to take advantage of the opportunity. For the Government Information Service, I am Janelle Norville. The World Bank Group has been invited by the Eastern Caribbean Central Bank, ECCB, to provide technical assistance to address regulatory issues within the OECS countries. This is in an effort to improve the investment climate and enhance competitiveness of key sectors in an effort to enhance private sector investment in the OECS. Two technical officers from the World Bank Group were recently on island to conduct a scoping mission as part of an advisory project which seeks to address regulatory constraints within the OECS. One of the Eastern Caribbean Central Bank's strategic goals 2017-2021 is to support OECS member countries to rank in the top 50 in the World Bank Doing Business Indicators. Lars Grava is the Senior Private Sector Specialist with the World Bank Group. And we have been invited by the Eastern Caribbean Central Bank uh, to look at some of the regulatory procedures and regulatory constraints that affect doing business and private sector development in several of the OECS countries. So we've been doing, um, visiting a couple of your neighboring countries and speaking with both the public and the private sector in order to get a more complete picture of what are the challenges that businesses face when they interact with government and um, learning, learning more about perhaps where we can uh, lend a hand in uh, providing some international good practices and some advice for reforms that these countries may want to undertake. The National Competitiveness and Productivity Council, NCPC, has been instrumental in coordinating the St. Lucia leg of the visit of the World Bank officials. Director of the NCPC, Fiona Hinkson, explains. 
So our role as NCPC is basically to facilitate that process, that public-private dialogue process where they met with stakeholders within the public service and the, and the private sector as well. And many of the constraints identified included starting a business, getting licenses, um, accessing um, concessions, as well as constraints that um, the private sector have, especially when it comes to exporting the products in relation to certification and standards. Hingston noted that this project fits perfectly with the mandate of the NCPC, particularly as it relates to the ease of doing business agenda. Addressing those regulatory constraints definitely impacts on the business performance because it helps them to become more productive and also help them to remove the bottlenecks that they experience on an everyday basis so they can become more efficient in the business operations. The World Bank's senior private sector specialist said recommendations emanating from this project would include long-term, medium-term and short-term solutions. People are very interested, especially in short-term solutions, what we call stroke of the pen reforms, where a leading officer can simply by a stroke of the pen decide that this, is, this procedure is going to be made faster or this information is going to be posted on the website. So these are the short-term recommendations that we can provide and on which government can quickly take action. Then there are the longer-term um, solutions where we may suggest, well, your legislation could be improved in order to be in compliance with international best practice but we recognize that that may take a longer time. The St. Lucia leg of the World Bank project dubbed Improving Business Regulations Within the OECS for Increased Competitiveness was conducted July 1st to 2nd, 2019. For the National Competitiveness and Productivity Council, Glenn Simon reporting. And this is the NTN Nightly. Ryan O'Brien is up next. One of the eight universally recognized rights of the consumer is the right to be heard. This means that every consumer who is dissatisfied with a good or service has the right to lodge a complaint to the provider of that good or that service. This should be the first point of lodging a complaint. Ensure that the receipt, as proof of the transaction, is available. Welcome back. We join Ryan O'Brien for the latest happenings in youth development and sports. Thanks, Misha. Welcome everyone to your update from youth development and sports on the NTN Nightly News. I'm Ryan O'Brien. Winners of the CARICOM 10K held here in St. Lucia, organized by the CARICOM Secretariat in collaboration with the Ministry of Youth Development and Sports, have spoken about their experiences during the 2019 staging of the event. The Vincentian pair of Junior Ashton and Linda McDowell were overall winners in the male and female categories, respectively. The event was good, good weather and everything. Uh, it was very good. I enjoyed it. What was your strategy going into the run? Were you able to assess the field even before the start? Well, my strategy was to my strategy was when the race start was to just go to them guys and just hold it there and 8k I supposed to just go in the lead from there and I accelerate but it happens so when you have a plan B plan A you must have a plan B. My my plan changed in the in the race cause the, the Antiguan guy make me have to change my plan. I, I make my move at 7k. I have to make my move on him early and I just stay in the lead from there. Were you familiar with many of the other competitors in the race? How often have you all competed against each other? Well, I never really compete again. Only the, the Lucian guys I are familiar with, Winsboat and Dupree. They are the only two I are familiar with in the race. The other guys was junior athletes. Here's the first male finisher, Junior Ashton, as he spoke to the NTN nightly. Female winner, Linda McDowell, has dominated the event in the recent past, copying her fourth title. It was a really cool route. It's just that I was I just started recovering from the flu, so I had it to give it the best that I can. Okay, um, compared to the other um, territories in which you had to, to run, how do you compare this route? Was it, um, it's basically a, a very flat one. How does it vary from the others that you've had over the four years that you've won? 
It most of this was a lot, lot of, of flat, lot of corner, lot of bends. It, it was a pretty cool, pretty cool um, route for us. Yeah. And your other competitors that you're up against, I'm sure you're quite familiar with most of them. Yeah, most of them. Okay, so, um, how long have you been running, and what's your experience like in St. Vincent and the Grenadines for road running, especially among women? Well, I'm the top female distance runner in my country, and I've been running since I was a little girl. CARICOM 10K female champion, Linda McDowell. CARICOM Secretary General Erwin LaRock has underscored the importance of the CARICOM 10K, saying that it sends a strong signal to member states that it is crucial for their populations to continuously be aware of healthy lifestyles in combating non-communicable diseases and the seriousness of staying active. We have to keep on promoting a healthy lifestyle. The, the incidence of NCDs seem to be on the rise. I don't have the exact figure, but, um, and I know we also have, um, we also celebrate CARICOM Health Week, I think, Wellness, Wellness Day. And again, I've witnessed that in some of the member states, CARICOM Wellness Day also exhibits, um, also um, has some athletic um, walks and stuff. I'm encouraged doing walks. Um, I try to walk every day. I don't always get to it. But, um, you know, even if you could just do 10 minutes, um, the doctor told me four times a week minimum. You know, you, it doesn't have to be anything strenuous, but just to keep your heart pumping, it helps because especially as you get a little older, you know, you, and you begin to realize that, um, you know, you're, you're paying for all of all what you may have done as a youth. I think it is very, very, you must do this. And um, as I said, the incidence of persons with younger and younger people are, are now get, are having diabetes. And, and, and we, we seem to be consuming so much of these sweet box drinks and corn curls. When I see all the lovely fruits here. I mean, when I came in yesterday, I went to the supermarket, I got my bananas, I got my mangoes. We have to, we have to eat our fruits. We have, to, we have to live a healthy high style. And we have to keep on promoting it. But I know it's receiving the attention of the health ministers across the region. And um, certainly the heads of government, the heads of government have to, um, made a declaration on non chemical diseases and um, continues to receive reports. The last heads of government meeting in Grenada, uh, we had a special session devoted to that. I think that was about a year and a half ago, two years ago. And so, you know, so we're, we're working on it. The CARICOM Secretary General also noted that there was increasing awareness among the grouping that make up CARICOM on the need to maintain a focus on health issues within the individual territories. And that's how we wrap up our segment from Youth Development and Sports for today. I'm Ryan O'Brien. Thanks, Ryan. The Ambassador of the Kingdom of Norway to the Organization of Eastern Caribbean States, OECS, Her Excellency Ingrid Molestad, presented her credentials to the Director General of the OECS, His Excellency Dr. Didicus Jules, on Monday, July 1, 2019, at a ceremony held at the OECS Commission at Mount Fortune Castries. Ambassador Molestad outlined several avenues of cooperation that Norway is keen to explore with the OECS, especially in the area of marine management, biodiversity preservation, the effects of climate change, and the elimination of marine litter. Both parties agreed to work as expeditiously as possible in pursuit of common objectives and deepening relations. And stay with the NTN Nightly. Up next, Promise Hutchinson is here with the NTN Nouvelle Arqueo. One of the eight universally accepted rights of the consumer is the right to safety. This means that consumers must have the right to be protected against products, production processes and services which are hazardous to life or health. Such products and services must meet established national standards. These standards give the consumers the assurance that the product is safe for use or consumption. Welcome back. We join Primus Hutchinson for the NTN Nouvelle Arqueon. Monsieur Tarnisher, Monsieur Madame, le Parti Marqué Nouvelle Responsabilité pour Information en Gouvernement Celle-ci, GIS, à ce moment-là, Télévision Nationale, puis à NTN, Capoceto Nouvelle Arqueon. Monsieur Primus Hutchinson. Celle-ci, qui a continué pour espionner ses progrès 
en si quantité de touristes qui ont visité le pays pour l'année ici pour la période de 5 mois, janvier pour mai. C'est aussi enregistré 185 568 les étrangers qui visitent le pays et qui ont hôtel. Ça, c'était 60,1% plus que la même période là l'année passée. Ça te dit, c'est plus haut le nombre de touristes que j'ai enregistré pour qu'on reste en pays en l'histoire des affaires touristiques. En premier quartier l'année ça là, la tenue augmentation de 24,8% avec 2,2% en nombre de touristes sorti l'Angleterre et l'Amérique. Pendant ça, ça qui sorti à l'Allemagne, augmenté par 6%. Avec les étrangers, la, la place à la terre a grandi par 6,3%. Agrandissement doublé par 13,1% pour la première fois en l'année sala et en mois avril et ça tenait pour faire et puis ces activités qui étaient pour coup pour PAC. La place Caribla du bout à part pour Cani plus grand pour ça, ça c'est 50,5% et aussi augmentation de 2793 monde qui visitaient. Moi, je suis vivant et puis activité parmi tout ça. C'était spectacle jazz et plus voyage de avion en Caribla en parmi l'autre. En résultat de ça, il y a un total de 34 354 touristes visités. Ça, c'est plus que 6,4% que l'année passée. Alors, l'année 2019, Jacques a trouvé qu'il y a une première année et peut juste trouver qu'on prime l'année qui trouve sa vie de cette ci Ça c'est parce que moi, janvier, février, avril, mai, j'ai passé avec plus d'accomplissements qui étaient déjà là avant, concernant les niveaux touristes que j'ai visité cette ci Moi, j'ai, pour septembre, qui a aussi montré un pile pour mettre, comme les autorités touristiques cette ci qui a aspiré pour plus de touristes visiter. Ça c'est pour Carnival, Mercury Fest, ex spectacle Roots and Soul. Autorité a continué pour présenter cette liste comme pays pour ni plusieurs vacances en différentes façons pour amuser et intéresser et pour citoyer l'intérêt touriste pour visiter cette liste. Les résidents en village Kanawi qui à présent plus capable pour développer l'habilité ou pour l'avantage du travail qui est available comme il y a trouvé un établissement qui a oui bâti un village là pour aider à adresser ces capacités. L'initiative là a fait possible pour accueillir plus fort le programme pour indiquer les jeunes et aussi les adultes en village Kanawi. L'occasion pour servir comme computer pour faciliter de diverses façons de déploiement en parmi l'autre. Directeur pour l'innovation en ministère de l'éducation, Lionel Marze, fait ses résidents comprendre que le programme ça là a placé à dans une position pour avancer la capacité, pour développer et produire en diverses façons qui peuvent aider pour improuver la vie et en même temps faire une contribution pour le développement économique du pays. Si l'on mal le programme là, a placé ses participants à dans une position côté, il n'y a pas même nécessaire pour dire que la terre est à présent plus capable en dégré éducation. Mais ça y est, il accompli qui fait le travail ça là plutôt. Le programme là, il aussi pour tuer une occasion pour ses participants pour produire divers articles et pour aussi montrer ça y est capable pour faire et qualité de la mais le programme là, pas qu'il seulement placé attention à la technologie, mais qu'il fait available pour ses participants trouver un indiqué en divers états qui ont appris et qui met manière pour chercher pour eux. Le programme là, c'est une initiative une initiative des pays Cuba qui a procuré l'occasion pour les adultes pour l'avantage de diverses façons d'éducation. Cuba a établi le programme ça là en plusieurs pays à la terre. Représentatif pour Canary, qui est aussi le ministre des Affaires touristiques, honorable Dominique Fede, remarque que l'innovation, ce n'est pas seulement un supplément pour nous une grande quantité de ressources, mais plus important pour sa capacité, pour servir ses vélo, pour la capacité de créer. Selon honorable Fede, ça a tué l'occasion pour les pays comme celle-ci apprendre pour diversifier particulièrement en affaires touristiques. Le ministre de l'Éducation, ministre de l'Éducation et Innovation, honorable Dr. Gail Rigobot, a créé un programme de façon pour avancer et pour plus d'indépendance des affaires économiques. 
Son mani a te pou yon kou dimaj pase li 7 juye an etablisman nou vos ala an vilaj kanawi. Le chef se peyi karikom te ousi engaje li wepostatif sekte prive ek sosyete sivil di wan deliberasyon yo dan gwan kawadjem konfrans an set li si si men pase. Yo bie vini po gwe ki sekte prive ja fe pou etabli yon sekte prive wijonal etabli souman sa la ja dezigne konyon institisyon, dez asosyasyon kom yon karikom ek yo ka espe pou sa finalize pou fini souman lan esi. Institisyon sa la etabli prinsipalman pou sepote entyeman implementasyon CSMI. Se chef a kari kom lan ambwase ou ipinyon le sekte prive ek se asemi ka kotone pou opwe koyon ki ka vewitabman fasilite devlopman an wijon. Se chef la osi dako pou organizasyon des afet wavay ak kari bla koyon institisyon des asosyasyon pou komun kari kom ek ka bievini komitman yi pou engaje organizasyon sekte prive de kari kom pou participasyon yi an gop sala. Ek se kon sa nou atwa bout nouvel la, mese medam, mou ka wi mesyo ou pou gade. Ma wa ou yon invitasyon pou jenipi mou akon si de konsebe la vi, yon ay pwese tou lot nou fè la kweyol. Apre sa, mou ka vwe pwese tou, Nisha. Mesi yon pil primus, and here's a look at what's happening to us weather-wise. It is mostly fair, hazy and breezy, occasionally becoming cloudy with a few showers. A tropical wave located over the central tropical Atlantic is moving westward near 17 miles per hour or 28 kilometers per hour. This wave is expected to bring scattered showers and isolated thunderstorms over eastern Caribbean islands on Friday through to Saturday. Two other tropical waves located over the eastern and far eastern tropical Atlantic are moving westward at about 17 miles per hour and 28 kilometers per hour. Tides for Castries Harbor low at 4.01 p.m., high at 10.53 p.m. Tides for Viewfort Bay low at 5.28 p.m., high at 12 a.m. The sun will rise Thursday at 5.42 a.m. And that brings us to the end of the NTN Nightly. Join us next time at 7 p.m. with a repeat at 7 a.m. You can also catch up with us anytime on the St. Lucia Government Facebook page or YouTube channel. I'm Misha Charles.